optimal health, financial freedom, finding your life purpose. It's called The Simple Life. I'm just doing it my way. Welcome to The Simple Life with Gary Collins, your how-to guide for getting your sh** together. This is life. You gotta work on all these till the day you die. The only thing missing is you getting off your butt and doing it. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Simple Life with me. Here we go. Uh, I, I, I would, I've done one of these so far and I, I didn't realize how long it had been. And so I hope you enjoy these. Let me know if you enjoy them. Uh, I think they're valuable. If not, we don't need to do them. That's how easy it is. And for those of you who want to see the podcast studio, I sent it out to people on the newsletter, the updates. So go to the website and you can subscribe there. The Simple Circle. Be a be the simple circle. Be a, a part of it. I send out little things like that. And I wrote about it and I talked about how I built it because I built it all with these, these two hands. So you can go check that out. That's one of the benefits. The economy. Uh, like I said, I think these are valuable in a sense that it gives you an idea of what I do, how I do it, and also how you can react to some of the things. This is my opinion. I am not an economist by trade. I am not a financial advisor by trade, but I have ran, I, I, for a very long time, at least a couple of decades, I run all of my own uh, investments. I have, and uh, to include stocks, you know, properties, you name it. As I've said, I've made made a bulk of my money in real estate as a side hustle. I don't do it. I, I've never done it primarily. I use opportunities. I buy real estate and I sell it here and there. And that's how I've done it. So I want to share with you. So with that, you got to take it with a grain of salt. I'm not a professional in this, but I think I've done very well for myself. I believe I've been ahead of the curve on all the things that are happening. I left the government because I saw the direction where it was going over 10 years ago. I started a whole new life, uh, became very, uh, you know, financially fit, developed my life around the three-legged stool of optimal health, financial freedom by being debt-free and finding my life purpose. Uh, I didn't just create it. I lived it before I created it. That's how I came up with it. And so these moves I've made, you know, a lot of people leaving California in droves. Well, I left there a decade ago. So I was a little ahead of my time and I saw where California was going and I was born and raised there, lived there several times. I've lived all over the country. I love California, but my Lord, it is ridiculously expensive, super high crime, super high taxes and a lot of buffoons. It's, and it's crowded beyond belief. Now it is so much not fun. I I spent a lot of my life in San Diego Love that place. It is so crowded compared to when I lived there in the late 80s. When I first moved there, I've lived there several times, five times, I think, total. Um, So, you know, with that, I've made these moves. I just made a move now. I bought this property in Arizona two years ago before everyone was moving out here. So I'm not saying this to toot my own horn. I do this. I literally do this. I just don't tell people to do things and then I don't do them myself. Uh, you know, this is, uh, the best way to put it, uh, you know, I, I put things into action and if I screw them up, I tell you too, if I jack it all up, Hey, I'll let you know on that as well. But my, my moves financially, I think have been pretty solid. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm reaping the benefits right now from all of my financial decisions, my life decisions. I got a pretty good darn life. If COVID wasn't making it a mess, (laughs) For all of us, not just me, but it just aggravates me, you know, make all these moves. I couldn't have predicted COVID of all things, you know, uh, there was things about pandemics and endemic, but who knew? I mean, this thing came out of nowhere, caught, caught a lot of us off guard, but I was prepared. I, I, I was prepared for, for any kind of, of economic event or that could happen. And that's how I've built my life is to make sure that I'm prepared You know, just like uh, talking about selling everything. I did not intend to sell everything in 2021. The market dictated the terms. I have learned lessons over these uh, these five plus decades on this planet, living through a a few boom busts, losing my ass in one of them. uh, The last one, you know, the housing boom. And I learned some lessons. Uh, I've always said, sell when it's hot, not when it's not. 
So there was opportunities for me to clear assets and get rid of things that I never intended to get rid of because financially it was a smart decision to make. I had this property, I bought it prior COVID. So it's been over two years. Um, and I timing wise was, I got a 25 cents on the dollar. I bought this 20 acres for 25 grand. And people were, when I first bought that off-grid property in Washington, I think I paid 22, 23,000 for the original 20 acres. And then I had 50, which I made a lot of money on those three lots that I bought at the last couple of years. And I, I pay, so here we are, I go 10 years, almost 10 years later, I do the exact same thing somewhere else. So I kind of know what I'm doing in this stuff. You know, I, I have a lot of experience. I've owned a lot of property over the years, comparably to most people. I'm not, a, like I said, I'm not a flipper. I'm not, uh, you know, a guy teaching how to get rich in real estate courses or any of that BS. I don't do that. I buy on opportunities. I buy for places to live and I do it as a lifestyle, but I also come in, I, I buy these properties not to move or sell, but to move or to sell. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. You should always do that with property. Property is it, it, houses are a place to live and people get wrapped around the axle that it's their little, uh, you know, it's their little nirvana. It's their place. And that's good. Don't get me wrong. It is, but it's also an investment. So you must treat it as such, which means you need to buy something that you can get rid of. If you need to do not design it to be all personally developed around your likes, because guess what? And you go to sell it, no one's going to want it because it's built specifically for you. And let, I always say, unless you plan to die in that place, never do that. You know, if you want to paint pink walls and, and purple glitter and all that and gold on the ceilings and all this ridiculously stupidity, fine. Hey, that's your choice. That's a great thing about life. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't get it. Um, that's just not me. I shouldn't have said that. That was kind of harsh. But uh, realize that when you go to sell that place, even though it's a simple fix for a guy like me, paint is easy. I've painted several houses by hand, inside, outside over my life. Most people don't see that. They see a purple wall. And they go, what the heck is going on here? You know, pink countertops. I've seen them. Those are a little more difficult. You know, you start getting highly personalized in your property and it's going to be brutal to sell. So that doesn't mean you, you, you kind of have to find a middle ground. What, what sells and what do you like and kind of split the difference. You want to sell property quick, neutral colors. I've done it every single time. It doesn't mean I don't like the colors. I do like the colors, but they're neutral. I've used a lot of tans, taupes, light grays. That's all I've used. And people go, oh, that sounds boring. Oh, my God. No, if you paint it right, it actually looks beautiful. I two-tone everything. So ceilings are white. Walls are a, a base color. Um, and then I do my trim in, in different colors. I've stained it. I've done it all by hand. Uh, I did my last, that off-grid house. I did all of that in cedar, in cedar planks that I rip cut it and routed and sanded and stained. And so there's a million different ways, but they were all neutral colors. They were all colors that someone could walk in and go, that's cool. I can deal with that. You know what I mean? They can change it later on, but people don't want to move in a house and instantly have to paint pink walls over pink and purple walls and, and kids rooms with unicorns on the, they don't want to do that. So a little less, and that was a little side tangent, but that's part of this, of talking economy and where we're going. I want to get some stats out there real quick. Um, and I want to get, I, I talked about this in the last episode. It will be in the show notes. I believe it was 112. God, I had it written. I lost the piece of paper. Oh my Lord. Um, that, I couldn't believe it was that long ago. I, I thought we had just done that, but it's been a while. So I needed to do an update because this stuff's moving fast. I said then that all the numbers were saying the economy was strong. All the numbers were strong. And I said, BS, that is a red hair and smoke screen if I've ever seen one. I like to analyze and look at things as I see them. And some people have gotten all, a little upset by that. I call it the eyeball test. I I make decisions on what I see and the trend I'm seeing, what I'm seeing out there. Data is good. Um, today, almost all data is manipulated. So take it with a grain of salt. It has an agenda. Be real careful. Doesn't mean it's not good. I use it, but I also use it with, the, uh, with uh, an open mind of going, well, 
I better dig into that a little further. And what am I seeing? Does the data relate to what I'm seeing? So I just couldn't see it. If, if the unfilled job numbers were going down, I would agree with it. They've been going up. They've gone up 3 million since the last time I did this. Talked about the economy. Not good. I mean, people are leaving the workforce in droves. And, you, and they're telling you it's good because they're saying, well, no, they're just, uh, you know, they've, they've moved on. They're going to stay at home. And I'll tell you what, a big portion of people leaving the job market, you know, the reason they give, they're day trading Bitcoin. <laughs> what? I mean, you talk about just insanity. That is the most ridiculous thing. Uh, you guys know my opinion on Bitcoin. We won't, we won't get into that in, in here. I am not a fan and I am not someone who says invest in it. I think it's BS. I, I completely think if you can get rich off it, hey, I've had Miles Wakeham on here who got rich off it by accident the last time. He doesn't even like Bitcoin. So be careful with that. I mean, every get rich quick scheme out there sounds great. And we've chased, hey, we've all chased it and chasing that mighty dollar. But in the end, is that going to make you happy? And the odds are it's a zero sum game in, in, in a way. Someone's going to get really rich by tricking you into doing something that you think you're going to get rich on easy. Good luck. Does it work every once in a while? And is there a unicorn that, boom, pops out? Yes. For every unicorn, there are millions of losers. <laughs>